who is part of Iranian football podcast, Gol Bezan. Oh, yeah, great to have you with us on the show this morning. Before we get into today's game, there's been plenty of off-field issues dominating the build-up to this one from Iran's side. The national team captain, Ehsan Haj Safi, yesterday came out and said that his team sympathised and supported those protesting to bring institutional change in Iran. Just how significant was that? First of all, thanks for bringing me on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, look, obviously he's the captain, so he's going to say something uh, during a press conference. But I think ultimately the people uh, want actions. They don't want words anymore. It's a bit late now. Uh, the game is not long to go. It's a couple of hours away. So I think ultimately uh, people want the action on, on the pitch before kickoff maybe, maybe during the national anthem. Uh, but I think yeah, obviously it was important for him to to say something, to address um the killings happening in the country, of course, but ultimately uh, the people want to see actions on the pitch. Uh, do you think the players might have been affected by these protests? Um, potentially, yeah, I think so. There's a lot of pressure on them. They're getting a lot of uh, messages online, uh, messages uh, people saying, you know, why are you not speaking out? Uh, you know, obviously, um, it's, it's to be expected, I think, ultimately. Uh, that's just the way it is at this, at this point in time. But... Um, they played really well in their friendly matches in Vienna and there were also protests there to a lesser degree and they performed really well. So whether it's going to impact the performances is to be seen today, but I think um, for sure off the pitch and uh, in their own uh, heads, I think it's definitely affecting them. Uh, but, you know, but this is, uh, again, to be expected. I don't think there's anything uh, surprising. When we look at the group... Um... Oh, yeah. Iran very much considered the underdogs. What would you say are the strengths and weaknesses of this side? Yeah, I mean, I can see that. You know, ultimately, this team is not as well known as the other three in the group, no doubt about it. I think um, Asian football as a whole is not going to be massively covered around the world. But ultimately, yes, uh, I think Iran uh, are a good team. They're a first ranked team in Asia, they're, they're 20th in the world in the FIFA rankings. So they've got a strong. A strong case to make to say they're not the, the underdogs. You know, I think um, the US didn't have a great qualification for themselves, and um, you, I would consider them the underdogs personally. But I think uh, no doubt about it, um, all of these three teams, besides England, are going to be considered underdogs to some extent because they've all got their own uh, disadvantages. That you know, uh, we'll see how that kind of plays out during the World Cup. But I think Iran are are not a clear underdog, but there, there's definitely t um, moments in the matches where you will see they will have to fight through the adversity that an underdog would have to do so. It's underdogs, yes, but which players should England be particularly wary of? Um, well, I think it's quite obvious. Taremi, who plays for Porto, has done really well in Champions League, um, was nominated for the Pruskash Award um, last year. I, I think he's going to be a threat. Uh, for sure, considering England's had some injury issues uh, in defence uh, with Kyle Walker, for example. So he could be somebody who can exploit that uh, potential, uh, maybe lack of, uh, you could say, quality in defence for England. But ultimately, um, I think one of the players who could stand out, and I think it's because of the way we're going to play today, we're expecting to see a back three or a back five uh, for Iran unexpectedly, to be honest with you. Uh, but Moharami, the right-back, who plays for Dinamo Zagreb, who played against Chelsea in the Champions League really recently, um, did really well. He's going to be as a right-wing-back today, and he's quite a quick player, so we'll see how he gets on, on the on the right flank. Uh, he could cause some issues, so we'll see what happens. But I think, ultimately, um, Iran are going to defend for 90 minutes, no doubt about it, okay. under Carlos Queiroz. And what do you think is going to happen after 90 minutes, then? What's your prediction for today? Yeah, it's going to be again. I think again. I think uh, Carlos Kerr will set his team up for for defending uh, for 90 minutes. So I think if if the positive result for him would probably be a nil nil. If I'm being honest with you, I think England's going to nick it um, because I just feel like they've got a little bit too much quality in that final third. So I think a, a one nil victory for England is more likely. I uh, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us so on much. the show. Enjoy the Thank game. You. Thank you. In the same.